Vice President, you've just mentioned that there are interests behind it. There is ExxonMobil now, and it would seem that Guyana is continuing the history of dispossession of the territorial that the United Kingdom started. In Georgetown, we recently saw a photo of President Irfan Ali in the area that Venezuela claims as its own, and it, it is very close to the limit or the de facto line, because it cannot be called a borderline because it is a territory that is not established as such. And we saw him dressed as a military man. Meanwhile, here in Venezuela, we saw the Minister of Defense dressed as a military man because he is in the Minister of Defense, but with a leaflet of the consultative referendum in his hand, the complete map. What is the reading between one and the other? You have said that Guyana has been ex escalating its aggression. They have tried to generate a mat matrix that Venezuela or a narrative that Venezuela is the big, powerful country with great resources that is attacking Guyana. You know very well that it is very clear to the world who is the victim here in the sense that Venezuela has been a victim, hasn't it, of the government of the United States directly in 2015 as well as Obama's First of the British Empire. Exactly, but in 2015 there is a decree that lays the foundational for the criminal and legi legi legitimate blockade against Venezuela. And you start to see the process and you also see a process of Guyana where their leaders begin to have been very aggressive attitudes towards Venezuela. We cannot forget that grand grandeur in 2015, one of the most anti-Venezuelan presidents Guyana has ever had, even declared that Simón Bolívar is the thorn in Guyana's throat. Simón Bolívar is the thorn in Guyana's throat. And there, these authorities become principles of ExxonMobil. When they decide to go to court, it is because the ExxonMobil orders them to go to court. Let us not forget that the ExxonMobil has paid the lawyers for the defense of Guyana in the International Court of Justice. When we were there precisely because there was a hearing, well, they arrived there in ExxonMobil airplanes paid by ExxonMobil. There is an instrumentalization of Guyana by ExxonMobil and its authorities are working as ExxonMobil employees. This decision of both the president of Guyana and its parliament not to go to negotiations, not to engage in dialogue, is part of a provocation script against Venezuela, what we have called the drums of war. And our minister of defense, as you have rightly said, has come out in promoting the consultative referendum to the Venezuelan people. That is a constitutional right of our constitutional order, where Venezuelans have the right to be consulted on essential matters of national life. Just about that, and I come back again to the International Court of Justice, not because I'm personally very interested in it, but as the act, one has put one's cards on the table as well. Well, recently, Guyana went again to the International Court of Justice, as it is trying to pigeonhole us there asking that this instance to disregard the consecutive referendum of December 3rd. And at the same time, Luis Almagro, the ineffable, or some call him, Secretary General of, of Organization of American State, aligned himself with the Guyana position. He criticized the referendum and asked Venezuela to respect Guyana's decision to the court. This request for provis provisional measures to stop the consultative referendum in Venezuela is one of the most tremendous cries of desperation we have seen from Guyana. Really desperate, because there is no basis for the International Court of Justice to interfere in the interne internal affairs of Venezuela, of the internal order of Venezuela, the constitutional order of Venezuela. They were really showing a lot of desperation by pretending that the court can stop a consultative referendum where the Venezuelan parliament, the Venezuelan National Assembly decided, unanimously approved to call and consult our people. And well, then they went to the electoral power and set a date for December 3rd for our people to be consulted. How can an international court of justice come to stop a consultative referendum in Venezuela? This really has no legal or ju juridical basis whatsoever. 
It is only demonstrating not only Guyana's desperation, but also that Guyana has become a true colonialist conclave, an imperialist conclave of those who are its allies. Who are Guyana's allies? Because they claim to be a victim, but who are Guyana's allies? With whom does Guyana carry out joint military exercises in this region threatening Venezuela? Nothing more and less than the United States Southern Command, who supports Venice Guyana. Where did they go to ask for the consultative referendum to be stopped? To the Organization of American States, of which Venezuela does not belong because it has a terrible record of coup d'etats, assassinations, invasions in Latin America and the Caribbean. Those are Guyana's friends. The great powers of Guyana's friends, and they threaten Venezuela because every time they carry out a joint military exercise with the Southern Command and the Pentagon, what they, are, they want to say is Venezuela. In other words, they're doing an open threat against Venezuela. Their partnership, I have said, their partnership is to attack Venezuela between the United States and Guyana. Vice President, if we look at the timeline of the year 2015 when Barack Obama signs the decree indicating Venezuela as an unusual threat to the security of the United States, months later, the thing, this thing happens, the famous ExxonMobil announcement and then the whole aggression escalates. Do you think that this could be linked? Sure, it's concatenated, Madeleine. It is the fifth period that the president has called the conspiracy against Venezuela. They try to recreate a situation of internal weakness with the criminal blockade against our country, the economic blockade. And the Venezuelan people gave convincing signs in the Union Nacional we have been victoriously overcoming the worst difficulties of our republic has ever known. They wanted to recreate the same conditions of 1899. And then, as I have said, they try to validate as a title of possession of that territory because they have a precarious possession of that territory. They tried to validate a title by giving it to a fraud. That is absolutely null and void. It does not exist. Fraud cannot have any legal effect on any situation, much less on this. And that is also why in the 1966 Geneva Agreement exists, because it was assumed that there was a claim on that. If it had not been assumed that there was a claim, there was a problem with that fraud. That award had to be a product of the political convenience between United States and the United Kingdom. The Geneva Agreement would not exist but they intend to kill, to assassinate. But the Geneva Agreement says that it is enforced until it is a practical and satisfactory solution for both parties on that territory. 